Hi, everyone. Welcome to week 20. Well, we had a good weight loss this week. It was 2.3. And you say, oh, well, Jill, you were going to go up in dosage. Well, I started the dosage today. I just took it a few hours ago. So this 2.3 is actually just me. And I do feel still vindicated that I asked to go up in dose, even though I had a good week. I, I thought a lot about that. Maybe I should have stayed. Maybe I should have stayed at 5.0. 12.5 is as far as you can go. So if you're not done with your weight loss and you're not done kind of curing your ills, by the time you tap out of 12.5, there's nothing left. There's no dose that you can go to that's even higher. So I've been very careful about when I increase dose. But even having a good weight loss week, I still noticed that the, the food voices came back, but I never had a very strong food voice. That was never my problem. But my ADD come back. All the things that I noticed when changed when I was on this drug started going away. This is that book, Flowers for Algernon, right? I suddenly started noticing all the side effects went away, but so did all the benefits of this drug go away. And I test my glucose. I have a consumer kit. And back right when I started it, my blood sugar was sinking, sinking, sinking. And I got to the point where it was 70 in the morning, which is good. My blood sugar was 70, ate something, but then worked out. I'd start to have a low blood sugar feeling in me, and I would test it, and it would be low. Right now, two weeks ago, it went up to 90, which is still low, because I think you want it to be under 100 after fasting overnight. Today, it was 106. So I feel vindicated that this was the right time to move up. The blood sugar is not as controlled, the weight loss not happening, and all the mental benefits of this drug went away. So we'll see how it goes. But I have to tell you, I was a little bit nervous about taking this higher dose. I read people really lose weight on the 7.5 and the 10.0, that that seems to be most everyone's favorite weight loss dose. But it's also where a lot of people say, I never had side effects until I went to 7.5. I never had side effects until I went to 10.0. So I was a little bit nervous. So far, we've been really good about the side effects. I haven't had much of a problem at all. And when I had some dietary issues, again, related to when I went camping and not getting enough fiber, maybe not getting enough water, fixable. I started drinking more water again. I remembered, and then I would eat some pears and get more fiber in. It's been fine. What would today bring? Now, before on the old dose, this didn't happen in the 2.5, but at the 5.0 dose, I would feel a little nauseous for about two hours after I took my shot. I just didn't feel right. But I, I work at home and I work in IT. So I just sat there. I mean, I'm not, I'm not really going to notice I don't feel the best when I'm just sitting down doing nothing. I noticed when I was camping, I also had weakness that I just did not ha have enough oomph to continue some hike that I was doing with my friend. I had to sit down for a little bit and rest. And then about two hours after I took the shot, it all settled itself out and I was fine. What was going to happen today? Am I going to get nauseous? As I've seen a lot of people complain that they get nauseous at this drug level. Am I going to start to throw up? Some people say that they have felt like they throw up at this drug dose. But so far, I have not done either of those things. And so I didn't know. Took the shot. It was very weird. My stomach gurgled for a little bit. Gurgle, gurgle. And then it just stopped. I never felt nauseous. I never felt sick. Nothing happened. I ate dinner. Maybe maybe if I eat something, then I'm going to start feeling nauseous again. Nope, didn't feel anything. I feel fine. And I hope that's a good sign. And I hope the other parts of it start to come back. I'll be able to tell early on kind of the mental noise of ADD, where you get a lot of, I don't want to say voices in your head because it sounds worse than it is, but your brain is like a river and sometimes leaves and branches and rocks flow down the river and it's impossible to stop it. When I have been on this drug, that doesn't happen. I have the ability to focus a lot better than I used to. In fact, I can focus so hard on things that sometimes I just work on a project without relenting. So we'll see if all of that comes back. But so far, I feel pretty good and nothing is really wrong with me. So I'm hoping that continues. Last week, I went to a conference. I was speaking at a conference at a college. And so I had a five-hour drive, spoke at this conference, and then ate lunch and then turned around. For the most part, the speaking part went well. I packed apples and pears. Of course, I did. 
and a lot of bottles of water so that I would always have an available bottle of water, cold, ready to drink. Someone said, well, doesn't this college have bottles of water or water available? Oh, well, yeah, they do. But I just wanted two in the car for my drive out and two in the car for my drive home without having to think about it. So I had this army of water bottles in the car ready to go. Went really fine. So what I did is I ate dinner on my own. I packed a keto bread sandwich so that I would have plenty of fiber that day. Went to my hotel room, checked in, drank a lot of water, got up the next morning, ate a power bar and a bag of nuts, more water. That was fine. Did my presentations. And so then my presentations ended around 1.30. Went down to the cafeteria, which I had an all-you-can-eat pass. And it was before I took my next dose of Monjero. So I was probably at the most hungry I always am. I might have mentioned before that when I take the drug, it is an effect. I don't feel hungry. I don't think about food. I can go all day and not eat. In fact, I have to remind myself to eat. That's now why I am food logging, to make sure I eat enough. But on Monday, then Tuesday, and then Wednesday before that drug, you can feel the grip of that drug letting loose. So I decided that I wanted to still stick to my diet. Again, I feel like these times where the drug is not working as effectively as it normally does, is it's like training wheels. It's like baby training wheels. So I went to the cafeteria, even though it has every kind of food known to man right there at that um, buffet, kept it simple. Had a little salad, had some pork loin, which they just had some protein, and a little bit of vegetables with it. And then I took and had, there's a whole case of pies. And I've always eaten the pie and the ice cream, and I've always had all the things. This time, I just grabbed a really tiny sliver of pie. I just wanted a taste of a little bit of pie. I mean, the sliver was no bigger than, you know, my pinky. Got it in, tasted good, glad I had it. Went back out to my car, took my shot in my car, which is funny, I've never done that before. I wonder if anyone was looking in the dorm windows at me shooting like an injection in my car. It looked really horrible. And then drove home. Felt good, everything was fine, and then went back and took up my eating style when I got home and made sure that I got, like I said, plenty of water. That was my big concern and plenty of fiber. And the fiber part is somewhat easier for me. I have the fiber care pills if I really run into trouble. Three of them are six grams of fiber, so two grams of fiber per fill. But these little guys, these little guys I think are 50 calories and there are maybe 11 grams of fiber. The bigger ones are 70 calories and they have 17 grams of fiber. It is practically just like eating wood pulp, but they taste good and they have a ton of fiber and they're very low calories. So you throw one of those together, maybe put a little chicken in it and you are good for the day. So that was totally fine. Ate a few of those, had them in a little bag on my trip and it was all great. So we survived this whole speaking engagement and did really well. Like I said, lost 2.3 pounds on the diet, took the new drug. I'm interested to see if my weight loss will kick back in again now that I'm on this new dose. I'm kind of excited and experiment way to see what happens next. The part I'll talk about today is that I try very hard to gear everything in my life towards whatever goal I have. So last year, my whole year was practically dedicated to getting a new job. I got a new job that took months to get. The application process is very long. That was my focus. As soon as that was done and that was in the bag, health. Health became my one focus. And so I did a review on a podcast about the one word, that every year you pick a word that everything focuses around. And after I got the job, health. Every question had to be answered, health. Should I eat only 300 calories because I know that this drug will let me eat 300 calories and not get hungry? No, health. Should I go exercise or should I just sit down and play a video game? No, health. Go exercise. The answer always ends in health. So I try to frame everything in my life around that one word, that one goal that I pick to be the main goal. And that means a lot of different things. First of all, I have that mantra of health. I remember it all the time again when I'm answering questions. But the other part of it is I do everything around it. I have a stack of exercise clothes. Whenever it is I need to exercise, I just pull one off the top. In my cars, I have exercise shoes. So there's never excuse why I can't exercise. Oh, I don't have my shoes with me. 
all these things are taken away. Those decisions are gone. I never have to go, oh, my gym clothes are in the wash, or boy, I don't have good shoes to wear to the gym, or why don't I have my biking clothes? I can't go biking. I don't even know where my clothes are. That is taken care of. It's always available and it's always there, focused to be my goals. It's not so much that I do vision boards, although you can do vision boards where you make basically a picture collage of whatever it is your goal is. If your goal is to get so healthy that you can do a marathon and you just put pictures all over your vision board of people winning marathons and feeling great about themselves or yourself running and reminding yourself. What I do is I have essentially four photo hanging things in my house. One of them shows me on adventures when I was in Iceland, when I was in Hawaii, when I went on my 102-mile hike in England. Those are all things that I try to say, look, Jill, you get healthy again. You can do all those things and do them even better now. I have one that is dedicated to family and friends to remind me why, oh, I don't know, being healthy is so important to be there with my family and friends. I have another one that is just goals I've accomplished, things that I've achieved that I never thought I would get to, to remind me that hard things are doable. I have done hard things. Look at all these hard things I did that I never thought as a kid that I would have, that I would be able to do these things. Even dumb things, and it's not dumb, but like my house. I never thought I would have my own house, and I do now. And I've had it for a long time. But as mediocre and as boring as my house is, it was something I worked really hard for. So everywhere around me in this entire house is just geared to me getting my goals. Every room is set up to be there to get my goals. Every stack of clothing, everything in my life is there to make it easy so I can get my goals. I had a problem that I was working out and having the blood sugar problem in the morning. My blood sugar would spike if I didn't eat anything before I worked out. You know what? Bag of nuts sitting there every time in my little gym room, ready for me to eat every morning. Water, cold water. Well, then I'd have to go downstairs and get myself some cold water. Got myself a little cooler tank to go in my gym. So I always had a fresh supply of water all the time. No excuses. I'm going to shut down everything that could possibly lead to an excuse. Like I said, making sure that every room in this house fit for my one goal. Making sure that every picture frame reminds me of my goal. Making sure that when I get up in the morning and I see my mirror in the bathroom, my goal is right there. I'm never far from it. It can be quite tiring to constantly see this one goal. Oh, I don't know, just following you around all over the place when you go to your house. But it absolutely works. It's always at the top of my mind. So I feel like gearing your house, setting out your clothes, putting gym shoes, even if you have to get an extra pair of gym shoes so you have them in your car, makes all the difference in the world. I'm looking forward to next spring being much thinner, getting out there on my bike, going on big hikes, and hopefully being considerably smaller than I am today. And in fact, what's funny about it is that when I'm losing weight, this month of October has been kind of bad for me, but actually, when you think of it, it's kind of hilarious. I lost 4.5 pounds in the month of October. Manjaro thinking, you think, oh, that's pretty bad, but it's really good in the grand scheme of things. But I'm going through clothes so quickly that I have shirts that are my favorite shirts. I have to wear them before I end up giving them to Goodwill. Oh, I love this shirt. This is one of my favorite shirts, but you know what? It's honestly quite baggy on me. It's about to go out too. I just brought five new bags of clothes to Goodwill. And it's amazing to me that this is going so well and so fast. And so I think before people dismiss these GLP-1 drugs, I, I hope that they look at it as taking a group of people and really saving their lives. It's so stunning to me how well this works. And I can do all the things. I, I have a productivity podcast, so I do all the things. Like I said, my whole house is geared towards my one goal. All the food in my house was geared towards the one goal. I threw out before Mangero, long before, any food that wasn't healthy for me. And I don't grocery shop bad food for me. 
I did everything I could. And I was, like I said, losing weight. I was losing glucose. I was getting healthier, but it was very slow. So this drug really can be a miracle for people. And I'm just stunned by it, uh, honestly. And, you know, the other interesting thing is I'll see ads all the time that will say something like, oh, this is a Monjero replacement or a Nozempic replacement, or this will bolster and help you lose even more weight while you're on Ozempic. These drugs don't need a thing. They cure, like I said, the, the mental issues of it. There might be other mental issues you have, like you eat for stress or you eat for social things, and it's not going to fix that part of it. But in the food noise, the ADD, the addiction kind of messages, the glucose, if you have high glucose and you're heading towards diabetes or you hit diabetes, and then the weight loss really is a miracle. And I think what's interesting is that if you told people, I have a drug to help you get over drinking or drugs or cigarettes, help you quit that, and you said to them, well, you should man up and just lose it on your own, people would be like, I've never been able to quit smoking and now I can quit smoking. Or I've never been able to quit drinking. My dad was an alcoholic. He never his whole life could quit drinking. Food is in the same boat for a lot of people. And this drug really is a miracle for people. I hope that either if you know people who are taking this drug, you cheer them on because this is not just doing it for them. This is a lot of work still, even though it's very helpful. I hope you're celebrating with them their, their achievements. Again, in about a year from now, I will be done. I will be at a weight I've never been at my whole life. And this is exciting. So again, the 7.5 dose, I'm excited about it. I'm hoping to see some weight loss kick back in again. I'm hoping to, again, have a big winter. Let's see. It is approximately four and a half months till hiking season again. Almost five months, right? That means 20 weeks. Let's have a really good weight loss time and, and get back out there and start doing adventures again. I want my life back. And I think with this drug, I'm going to get there. I appreciate you watching. Please remember that I have a number of podcasts. You can find them at abetterlifeandsmallsteps.com. The link is at the end on the title card. I talk a lot about productivity. I talk about going outside and doing na nature things, observing birds and animals and planets and stars and things like that. It's not a real science podcast, but it's about getting out there and being, I don't know, more observant about nature and knowing what's going on around you. That one's called Buzz, Blossom, and Squeak. Appreciate you listening. Please have a great week and, and go ahead and email me at jill at startwithsmallsteps.com or comment in the messages right here if you have anything to say to me. I appreciate you being out there and have a wonderful week.